Um, good afternoon. I'm Jolie, and I'm a senior in Honors Independent Scientific Research. Today, I'm going to be presenting my research on parental perceptions of students' mental health and well-being in grades 7 to 12 at a private high school on Oahu. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, the mental health and well-being of adolescent students altered due to the reality of lockdown and since then has become a rising issue leading to my personal motivation to learn more about adolescent students' well-being and mental health and the extent to which parental figures understand this highly prevalent issue. Lots of attention has turned to the issue of academic stress in adolescents and how it may affect emotional well-being, health, and performance on school assessments. It's especially in the spotlight today because of the increase in suicidal rates and psychological disorders commonly present in this rising generation. The presence of stress can be inferred from the presence of anxiety or worry. While it is hard to define stress, it's the reaction of one's body and mind to something that causes a change in balance. 27% of teens report high levels of daily stress, 31% feel overwhelmed as a result of stress, and 34% believe their following academic school year will be more stressful. A whopping 83% of teens indicate school as their primary stressor. Fear of school failure is reinforced as well as having a great influence on students' achievement behavior, placing more pressure on students. Sleep deprivation negatively affects levels of students' mental health and well-being, according to the National Institutes of Health, and 72.7% .7 or 7 out of 10 students don't get enough sleep on a school night. There are undesirable consequences of a student's poor mental health. First. 23% of students aged 23% of students aged 11 to 20 are psychologically at risk for depression. Not only that, 66% of, of students report feeling social and academic pressure, such as college acceptances, social belonging, and the peer pressure of using social media as well as drugs and alcohol. Lastly, the quality of life and well-being of students are altered, worsening over time. Among stress factors for high school students, parents play a major role in affecting one's well-being and mental health level. Evidence has shown that the influence of family and culture alter a student's motivational orientation and sense of well-being. Aligning with consequences of pressure placed on students to achieve high grades, such as depressive episodes. The pressure of an adolescent student varies depending on different factors, such as culture, personal values, religion, and economic status. Parents play an important role in adolescent's life and are therefore considered significant contributors to a child's learning and academic success. Involvement of parents can be as subtle as parental educational beliefs and school achievement expectations, which parental figures apply to promote their children's achievement in and out of school. However, not all types of parental involvement are positively linked to a student's achievement leading to my purpose of evaluating students' mental health and well-being levels in the extent of parental knowledge and awareness of this rising issue. So my research question was, by comparison, how accurately do parents receive the level of mental health and well-being of their students in grades seven to 12 at a private high school on Oahu, Hawaii? My methods began with researching validated questionnaires and skills, where specific questions from three scales were picked to best suit my data collection in relation to adolescent students' mental health and well-being. I combined the Comprehensive Quality of Life Scale for students in grades 7 to 12 by Cummins and McCabe, the Perceived Stress Scale by Sheldon Cohen, and the Health-Related Quality of Life Scale to make up a survey that was emailed to all students and their parents in the upper school in, through grades 7 to 12. Once all student and parent responses were received within a one week time frame, data was cleaned and organized, compared anonymously to other students within the sample, sized to create contrast by gender and grade, as well as separating parent versus student responses. Once data was cleaned, whisker box plots were created, producing 12 separate graphs answering the two main analyzed questions for the survey using ChemGrid, Python, BoxPlotR, and SurveyMonkey. My two main analyzed questions were, 
During the past 30 days, for how many days did you feel you did not get enough rest or sleep? My second question, thinking about your mental health, including stress and problems with emotions, for how many days during the past 30 days was your mental health not good? Turning, oh. So taking a look at our female mental health. Sorry, one second. Taking a look at our female mental health, they declined as they got older. So taking a look at grades seven to eight, their averages, my apologies, everybody, give me one second. In grades seven to eight, these students averaged 11.1 days of poor mental health. And interestingly, parents perceived this to be around 3.8 days. Moving to grades nine to 10, the average increased to 13.2 days, while parents estimated it to be four days. Among our junior and senior females, the average was 15 days and not aligning with parental perceptions of 3.4 days. In comparison, our male students exhibited an average of six days in grades seven to eight with parents perceiving 3.1 days. In grades nine to 10, this increased to 9.8 days while parents estimated 2.6 days. For our junior and senior male students, the average stood at 7.9 days with parents receiving 2.7 days. A few takeaway from these findings, Female students consistently reported poor mental health compared to their male counterparts. This trend is not only evident in our sample, but also aligns with existing literature. As students progress through their educational journey, we observe, we observe, oh my goodness. Sorry, everybody. We observe a decline in mental health for both genders. Alarmingly, female seniors at this private high school reported the highest stress levels, indicating a critical area of concern. Turning our attention to sleep patterns, female students in grades seven to eight averaged 16 days of poor sleep, while parents perceived this to be 5.2 days. In grades nine to 10, the average rose to 23 days of poor sleep, with parents estimating 10.3 days. And for our junior and senior females, the average was 24.2 days of poor sleep, not matching with parental perceptions of 5.4 days. For our male students, grades seven to eight averaged 14.2 days with parents perceiving 4.6 days. In grades nine to 10, this increased to 19 days while parents estimated 9.8 days. Junior and senior males reported an average of 20 days with parents perceiving 11.7 days. Looking at the sleep level results for all participants, there's a discrepancy between students' self-reported sleep days and parents' perceptions. Comparing both male and female responses, female sleep level responses indicated less amounts of sleep compared to, compared to their male counterparts. Female senior students get the least amount of sleep per month, which I think is associated with the month the survey was sent out, which was very close to the first, first college application deadline, and there's a clear gap between students reporting poor sleep and parents' perception across all grades with females showing a larger disparity. Understanding the mental health and sleep patterns for adolescents allow for early identification of potential issues. These findings shed light on the challenges faced by our young students, highlighting significant differences between genders and grade levels and emphasize the urgent need for targeted interventions to support our adolescent mental health and sleep. The disparities between genders and the decline in well-being as students progress through school are issues that require our immediate attention as well as highlight the need for increased awareness and communication between both parent and children about mental health and sleep. The importance of parental involvement in student mental health and well-being cannot be overstated highlighting the critical role that communication plays in fostering a supportive environment for adolescents. Effective communication between parents and students is paramount in understanding and supporting one's child's mental health effectively. I hope this research can serve as a catalyst for these important conversations.
A limitation of my research was the uneven distribution of responses between parents and students, with 292 parents compared to 760 students, which impacted the outcome of data collection. For future studies, I aim to explore the influence of cultural backgrounds on adolescent mental health, additionally including participants from both public and private high schools on Oahu would yield more comprehensive data. Considering the distinct academic expectations and environments in these institutions. Lastly, balancing the number of participants across genders and grade levels would enhance the accuracy of data analysis by reducing gaps in the box plots and improving the validity of conclusions. From this past year in honors independent scientific research, I learned countless skills. I learned countless skills, deepening my research skills. I solidified my skills in literature review, survey, survey searching, project planning, and annotation. annotations. This year has led me to become more interested in research and applying research to my future career in STEM. My advice to future students is choose a topic you're passionate about because you're gonna be focusing on this the whole year and enjoy the small steps and every single part of your journey because the research process goes by really quickly. Lastly, for acknowledgements, I would like to give a big thank you to Dr. Th Timothy Cottrell for, my, for his guidance and help with recruitment. I'd also like to thank Dr. Chan for mentoring and supporting my first research experience, as well as helping me with data analysis and feedback on my poster and paper. I would like to thank Dr. Lay for guiding my process and methodolo methodology, my parents, Wendy and T for their endless support, and my research buddies, Kaylin, Audrey, and Nana, and my period three class. Thank you.